Hello again. So we continue with Mark chapter 14, this time verses 12 through 25. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went into the city, and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say after him, one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. So let's unpack this. It's the Passover holiday. It's huge. It's an incredibly holy day. People across the world, Jewish people, uh, or people with Jewish culture, they celebrate the Passover when, again, if you remember, the uh, angel of death passed over their houses before the Exodus. And so this is a very, very important holiday in the Jewish culture. So they ask him, what, what should we do? They, and he tells them, well, you will go into the city, the various things will happen. And they, sure enough, happen exactly as he said. And so they end up finding a room for the for Jesus, who, remember, was a rabbi, a Jewish rabbi, a teacher. He was there, and with his disciples, they find a room for the Passover. So what is Passover? What does it look like? Well, I was really lucky a few years ago. I actually got invited to a friend of mine's uh, house where they celebrated Passover. And so I apologize now for all of my friends, my Hebrews and my Shebrews. I apologize for my mispronunciation of some of these words. But let's go over a few of them. So number one, dominating the middle of the plate here, although if you actually go to a Jewish home, you'll find that there's no official rule as to where things have to be on the plate. Some, some uh, Jewish families will disagree with me on that one. But uh, the, we have the zeroa, which is the shank bone. It's often, oftentimes it would be a lamb bone, it, although sometimes people will substitute a chicken wing or a neck or something like that. And that is there to represent the outstretched arm of God, which was uh, taking the people out of Egypt. I believe in Hebrew it's called Zeroa Netoya. And so that's what that's uh, representing. Again, sorry for my pronunciation. Then we have the hard-boiled egg, the Beitza. Now that that's uh, representing the sacrifice. And why is it an egg? Well, eggs are poor, or poor people's food. And so the idea being that we are the Jewish people are mourning the fact that we don't have a temple where we can make animal sacrifices right now. And so because they cannot do it properly at the temple with an animal sacrifice, they are making do with a with a poor version. And so the hard boiled egg represents that sacrifice that they would be able to use if there was indeed a complete temple in Jerusalem. Uh, numbers three and four, those are called the, I think it's the Maro and the Hazaret, which is basically a uh, like a, a sort of a bitter herb. It's talking about the bitterness of slavery when they were slaves in Egypt. And if you actually go to Jerusalem, if you go to the Holy Land, they tend to use romaine lettuce because uh, the romaine lettuce that they have there will, if it's a little bit old, you know, a few days old, it will be incredibly bitter. Uh, it was changed more often to things like horseradish when the Jewish diaspora was in uh, Germany, Eastern Europe. And those things were more easy to get hold of. Uh, a fun kind of irony is that Hazaret now in Hebrew actually means horseradish, even though originally it would have been lettuce. So there's a fun fact for you. Number five, we have the charo set. Now the charo set is incredibly sweet. It's usually made with walnuts or apples, uh, sometimes with wine or dates. And so it represents the sweetness of freedom as opposed to the uh, bitterness of slavery. And then lastly, on, on this list, we have the carpas, which is, uh, you know, any vegetable 
that isn't bitter can really be used for this. And oftentimes it will be dipped into salt water to re resemble the tears of the Israelites. So now you know. So if ever you get an opportunity to go to a Jewish home for Passover, I would recommend it. You are doing something that Jesus did himself, and it could be very, very enlightening for you to see a little bit more about the uh, shared heritage there. Okay. Back to scripture. So, so, so we get to the evening, and he's with the twelve, and he says to them, one of you will betray me. Well, we already know which one that is. That was Judas. He was seduced by his love of money earlier. They say, surely not I. All of them say, surely not I. Every single one says the same thing. Even Judas himself, in another gospel account, says, surely not I. And Jesus says, it's the person who's already started the meal. They, they, they're the one. He, he, he outs Judas in front of everyone. And that's very, very sad indictment for Judas because it says it would be better for him had he not been born. Now, I've had debates with several of my priest friends about whether Judas is in heaven. The answer is we don't know. But personally, I hope so. However, the amount of guilt that he must be carrying, knowing that he betrayed God, must be awful. I don't know if he's there. Honestly, there are people who will make quite convincing arguments that say he isn't but I really hope he is. All right, so now we have some of the most famous words in all of the Bible, which is the institution of the Last Supper. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them and said, take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. It's interesting. Using a meal, using that same style, Jesus initiates a new holiday, a new holy moment. And for people who are Catholic, he institutes a sacrament, that is the Eucharist. He says, take, this is my body. Take, this is my blood. He doesn't mention anything about symbolism. And some people believe that it is just a symbol, but those people perhaps need to turn in their Bibles to John chapter six, because Jesus gives a very difficult teaching. Symbolism is not a difficult teaching, but literalism, that's tough. Who can accept it? Well, that's why it's not easy. But let's look at the other word I underlined here, the covenant. What was the original covenant? The original covenant was made with Abraham. He was to be the father of many nations, which obviously became true through Ishmael and through Isaac. Many, many people can trace themselves back to Abraham. And this is a new covenant. Now, what has Mark been talking about so many times? Mark has spoken about this new covenant that also incorporates the Gentiles as well as the Jews. So Jesus, on this day, during this holy moment of Passover, institutes a new holy moment. And Jesus says, I will never drink again of the fruit of the vine until I drink it new in the kingdom of God. So that is how he sums it up before we uh, finish up. So that's what we have to talk about today. I hope you learned at least a few new things in here. If you have any questions, please let me know. And as for me, I shall see you tomorrow. Bye-bye now.